Hey everybody, it's Friday, October 23rd. Hope you've had a great week this week. And uh, I've been experiencing uh, some really great things this week. Um, got to hang out with my mentor and another couple friends on Tuesday afternoon. And it was just really great to be encouraged and uh, be able to connect with people like that. So I hope you're getting lots of opportunities to connect with the people you love and that uh, mean a lot to you. Um, uh, today I want to talk with uh, John. He's one of uh, he's a, a worker in Central Asia, and uh, uh, they've um, had close relationship with our church in the past. And they've been in Central Asia for some time, and they've just come home. And so I wanted to talk to him a little bit about that to find out um, what uh, uh, precipitated their coming home and um, what uh, what how they're uh, sorting that out these days. So uh, let's go to John now. Hey, good morning, John. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Tim. How are you? Good. It's so great to see you. We got to see you on the weekend, and that was fantastic. And uh, so it's so it's good. I mean, it's uh, is it good? I, I was going to say it's good having you home, but uh, that's uh, we'll, we'll find out more about that as we talk. Um, how has the adjustment been to coming back to cold weather? You know, it it hasn't been too bad. We had a couple of nice weeks when we were in quarantine when we first arrived. Uh-huh. And uh, so we got to enjoy some sunshine in the backyard and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, we're right back into, into winter here and, and uh, making the most of our winter jackets and things. So it's, yep. uh, it's going good. Are the boys loving it? They are. They loved when it first started to snow. They ran to the window. It's snowing. They, uh-huh. they loved it. So it was good. What kind of weather is it like in uh, Central Asia there where you are? Yeah, so where we live in Central Asia right now, it's currently like 15 degrees and sunny. So they've got some nice fall weather going on there. And uh, they should, they'll should get snow probably in the next month or two here, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so it does get, does get to about minus 5, minus 10 and snowy. So, yeah. Okay, so it's, it, there's some similarities. Not quite as, it's more like, what would it be, like uh, Okanagan area kind of? A little bit more like BC. Yeah, a little bit more yeah, like Okanagan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a surprise. You were planning to come back um, later, right? Mm-hmm. What was the plan for you to come back? Yeah. So um, obviously, we're uh, we're expecting another baby um, in the new year, which is very exciting. And we had made uh, the decision that we wanted to come back to Canada for the birth. Yeah. Um, and so initially, we we're thinking end of November, beginning of December, uh, we'd fly back. But there's a couple of factors that came into play uh, for us to decide to come back earlier. Um, there was some, uh, some things that could have been complications. Everything's fine with the baby and, Great. And, uh, and with Michaela as well. But we wanted to just kind of make sure that we were in, in good hands with healthcare and doctors here. Um, and then, of course, the pandemic. Um, we've had in months past um, the airport uh, in our country shut down for a number of weeks at a time. And so we didn't want to be stuck in country um, with no flights um, right. should there be a rise in cases in, in the fall and winter. So, um, so there's a couple of factors that played into us coming back a little earlier than, uh, than we anticipated. And so how did that do? Are you, uh, are you light on your feet like that? Or does it uh, take some adjustment for you to make the change? Uh, I, think, oh, I think there's just a lot of grace. We, um, you know, there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of work to kind of, last minute prep those things get our apartment you know ready for us to leave for several months uh figure out you know who's gonna um take care of our place or you know uh all that kind of stuff but it was um it was also really good i think there's just a lot of grace for us to to realize okay this is a window that's open up for us to come back and we're gonna make the most of this time so cool yeah and um so tell me about there's some some interesting developments since you've come back right with uh with your language study? Yeah, so we have, over the last year, we've been learning one of the local Turkic languages in our country, um, and that's been going great. We've, we've had a really good tutor for a number of months. Um, I was taking some lessons at a language institute there um, in the city, but we, uh, we've been finding that um, a lot of the people our age and younger are actually um, living most of their lives speaking Russian. So Russian is kind of the, the second language in the region. It's sort of the lingua franca for all the Stan countries in Central Asia. 
Okay. And so um, while a lot of people might speak one of the local languages with, say, their parents, their grandparents, or maybe at home with a lot of their friends and for work purposes, business, out in the city, shopping, that kind of thing, people use Russian. And so we decided a couple months ago, let's make the switch to Russian. Um, and, uh, and so when we came back here, we were actually able to find um, a local um, local native Russian speaker uh, here in Red Deer wow. who attends the same uh, church as us here. And uh, um, she's been great. We've, we've had a few lessons with her and it's been a, a really good experience. So really thankful for that. Do you find it more difficult or easier than the other language you were learning? Oh, both have their challenges. I think we're finding, um, oh, how do I say it? I guess what I've heard, what I, from what my understanding is that Russian is easier to get a very, very basic uh, grasp of, um, but it's really difficult to master. Whereas the local language that we're learning is much tougher to kind of get some of the basics. But once you hit a certain point, you kind of plateau and you can just coast um, and use it that way. So um, I think it has its pros and cons, its ups and downs, but we're, uh, we're finding it so far. So oh, That's good. Yeah. Tell me how, um, how Christ has been ministering to you these days. Yeah, I think, um, well, I think for one thing, we've just felt really supported um, and really encouraged and just lifted up um, from family and friends that have been praying for us and been sending us emails and, and text messages and notes and videos and stuff, just saying um, both before we left and, and since arriving back. And it's been really good, um, obviously with like pandemic and, um, just with uh, our lives, we're not going to be able to see as many people as we'd like over the, the next number of months. But we've really felt like people have understood that and they've just been really encouraging. And, and to know that we have so many people praying for us has been uh, just really, really life giving to us. So, yeah. um, so that's been one thing. Um, and then for, for me personally, I think I've been um, meditating and, and looking a lot at um, John chapter seven recently. Um, and just uh, the part that really stands out to me has been when Jesus stands up in front of everyone and just proclaims, um, you know, that he is um, the river of life, like he is, or he is the, he is the, he's the one who gives the water of life and he's the one that, that we drink from and, um, and then promising the Holy Spirit um, as well from that. And just, um, I think that this, this experience for, for us as it has, I'm sure for many people listening, um, this has been a season where, you know, we've had to really dig into our dependency on Christ, on his spirit. And um, so that's, that's just been a, a very small section, a really small passage that's kind of stuck out to me and that I've been holding on to the last number of months. You know, that's what um, people are saying. We were um, praying with some uh, other pastors this week and, talking a little bit about, um, you know, should, should we pray against COVID? What, what do we do about that, right? Mm. And uh, I, I, COVID has done some beautiful things in our lives. I think it's mm. really uh, increased our dependency on Jesus. I think it's, um, it's really um, shattered uh, a lot of other things that pretended to be solid foundations. And uh, because of that, that I, uh, there's some really good things about it. I mean, it's hard, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's hard on uh, families, and it can be hard on income, it can be hard on all that kind of stuff. But like um, Jesus is always, he's so good at turning what was meant for evil to turn it into something good. And mm -hmm. uh, so, I, yeah, I just, I agree with you that, that uh, this is what uh, God's been stirring up in your life, that, that we can trust him and he's faithful. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. totally. Well, uh, so we saw you on, uh, just last weekend. Um, do we get to see you any other time? Will you pop in some other time over the time you're here? Yeah, I, totally. I imagine that we will, uh, we're going to try to pop in, um, I, I imagine, several more times to, to see people and to be able to spend time with you guys on a Sunday morning and worship together, um, oh, awesome. even with the restrictions and even with, um, you know, the social distancing stuff. It's, uh, it's just really good to, to see your faces, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, say hi to people and, um, and just to be with you in person. So we definitely want to do that. More. Good. Well, it's mutual. It lit up, uh, lit up the room you guys walked in. So we're looking forward to that happening again. Mm -hmm.
for sure. All right, man. God bless you. Have a great day. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Bye. It's interesting that he's uh, feeling what many of us are feeling, the um, upheaval of our lives because of COVID. And, um, you know, theirs was pretty significant uh, to have to come home because they're not sure if the airport would be open or not, if, if things would shut down. Um, but they're trusting the Lord and taking it one day at a time, which is all we can do. And uh, so if you feel like your life has been turned upside down because of this pandemic, just know you're not alone and uh, that there are others uh, who are struggling as well. But God is close to all of us. He has not forgotten us and he's going to continue to strengthen us and encourage us and help us get through this. This will pass. This too shall pass. And uh, when it does, uh, I, I trust that we will have leaned into Christ during this whole crisis um, and that he's been able to shape and model our lives and make us more look more like him. So that's what I want to encourage you with today. Um, excited about this weekend. The elders and staff and, uh, and spouses uh, are going to be meeting tonight. And then uh, uh, we're going to be praying together and laughing together and eating together and um, uh, safely, eating safely. And, uh, and also just talking about the health of the church. And then tomorrow, the elders and I will be uh, meeting all day to talk and pray about our future, where God is leading us. So if you could be praying for us, that would be fantastic. We'd sure appreciate it. And then this weekend, uh, Sunday, we'll be uh, teaching again on our Heaven series. And I'll be talking about hell and uh, where it is, what is it, uh, what can we learn from scriptures about hell. And uh, again, this is a difficult doctrine. It's one that we kind of like to maybe ignore, but uh, Jesus sure didn't. And we got to take our keys from a master. So that's what we'll be talking about this weekend. Hope you can join us either online or in person. Please sign up ahead of time um, uh, on our website uh, before eight o'clock Saturday night. And uh, yeah, we'll hope you have a great weekend. God bless you guys. Love being your pastor.